What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new and potentially final episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right, we are back and we have made it to the 2025 Super Bowl here in year number three of the franchise. First time making it to the Super Bowl in this series and I am more than excited and with EA College Football 25 right around the corner and with Madden 25 right around the corner, it seems to me like win or lose, this is the perfect time to finish up this series. If you guys really want me to keep it going, however, please let me know in the comments. And I'm not saying I would be opposed to that idea. I love my Sentinels and I love me some Sentinels franchise. But I mean, the stage, you couldn't write the script any better with the new games about to drop and we have finally made it to the Super Bowl, but we can worry about that another day, another time. We got some business to take care of today. We got the 13 and four St. Louis Sentinels going up against the 12 and five Baltimore Ravens. Two pretty evenly matched teams, I would say. And it looks like this one will be played in Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. So we got our Super Bowl media day. See what Coach Smalls has prepped up for the media. Every coach's dream is to host the Lombardi Trophy as confetti rains down and you have a chance to do that for the first time this week. What would that mean to you? It would mean everything. Like you said, every coach's dreams of this moment. So it would mean everything to me. All the work we put in to prepare for this moment when we have the opportunity to call ourselves champions. We get 10 well-earned staff points. And I am pretty, pretty nervous to go up against Lamar Jackson and these Baltimore Ravens today. Oh, Jesus, my heart is beating so fast right now. Super Bowl week also means new potential dev upgrades. And I already see two here. How about Dudley Saxton going up to Superstar and Bart Burns going up to Superstar X Factor? How sweet is that? Let's talk about Dudley, man. The journey for this guy, he's got to upgrade too. Of course, we're going to elusive back, but we picked up Dudley in free agency. He was a low 70 overall, I, normal dev. I only picked him up because of his speed and he has climbed all the way up to superstar development. So we're definitely going to give him ju jukebox, 100%. Don't need to give him return, man. We could do closer, locker room pep talks, players with this ability, no probably not that he doesn't have the best ones as of right now we'll give him spin cycle too because dudley is uh always elusive and maybe uh receive improved like yeah goal line back i will certainly take that because when you get down there in the goal line i will take all the assistance possible but i'm just so happy for dudley and i'm sure you guys are as well but also equally happy for bart burns who is a superstar x factor player now they got him equipped with yak him up, and that is when they enter the zone, they're nearly guaranteed to break the first post catch tackle. I'm thinking maybe double me is probably the route to go. Uh, players are the reason they're running backs. Thank their blockers. No, I don't want that one. Grab and smash. I don't want that one. Double me probably is the move to go. Maybe rack him up. Receivers fight for every possible yard when they enter the zone. This ability increases their success. Yeah, we're going to go double me. I mean, that is probably the best, uh, you know, the best X Factor zone ability. Of course, Bart already had these abilities from being a superstar previously, but that is phenomenal. That is fan freaking tastic. And over here on the defensive side, Emmanuel Forbes up to X Factor. That's awesome. Chase Young oh. down to star. And how about James Smith Williams? Give this man a round of applause. He went up to star dev. But he was an afterthought on this roster and through pure blood, sweat and tears, hard work and determination, he led our team in sacks and he got rewarded with a dev upgrade. How's about that? But Emmanuel Forbes, though, it'd be nice. He led the league in picks, by the way, and he'll get a nice upgrade. Yes, we are going to go man to man for sure. And also he will get a superstar X Factor zone ability now as well they got him with reinforcement the game's top defenders excel in all situations increases the chance of defeating run blocks no definitely don't want that i'm thinking zone hawk probably uh he's more of a man-to-man -man guy though although he does play zone a lot when they enter the zone their coverage is tighter oh yeah we're going shut down baby emmanuel forbes is already a shutdown corner and now he is gonna have that much more assistance in the biggest game so far 
of the franchise. Baltimore Ravens, always a tough team to play here in Madden, of course, because of this man, Lamar Jackson, Zach Wilson. I really wish we were playing him <laughs> as opposed to Jackson, but we are not. Elijah Mitchell and J.K. Dobbins and Devin Singletary and Kevin Thompson, who looks pretty good, really strong running back room. No uh, stranger to good running games in Baltimore, that's for sure. Rookie Derek Verdon out of Youngstown State's their fullback. And then wide receivers, superstar development Zay Flowers to go along with Rashad Bateman, OBJ, still here in town. Shard Smith, auto-generated guy, looks pretty good. Rashid Shahid with the speed, always a fast, reliable target out there. Mark Andrews, one of the best in the business at tight end position. Ronnie Stanley, very good left tackle, also superstar dev. Brady Christensen is the left guard. Pretty solid option there. Tyler Linderbaum, always a reliable option at center. Pretty good offensive line. And with a strong running game like the Ravens have, paired up along a strong offensive line, that could spell disaster for us today. Defensively, Justin Matabuike up to superstar, so good for him. Joseph Asai on the right end. D tackles, they got uh, Travis Jones and Marcus Jenkins, two-year pro out of Oklahoma State. Nothing too crazy there. Adafe Owe, pretty good linebacker. Roquan Smith, one of the best in the business. Trenton Simpson, not a bad option either. And David Ajabo on the right outside linebacker position. Cornerbacks, always a reliable option with Marlon Humphrey. Good, solid vet. Bit of a drop-off, though. Rocky Sin, their number two. Charleston Haywood, the rookie out of UCLA. So, I mean, decent, but uh, definitely Marlon Humphrey going to be the guy to watch for. O or also Marcus Williams. Really good free safety. Kyle Hamilton, not too bad either. I mean, best kicker in NFL history. Come on now. Justin Tucker and then Jordan Stout is the punter. We've played the Ravens before, but I think it's been a while. And uh, with us being, you know, in opposing conferences, don't really get to see them that often. Of course, J.J. Ford was fourth in the running in MVP, but peep game. Your boy C.J. Smalls did win the coach of the year for the Sentinels. Some big last minute upgrades and then it is game time, ladies and gents. So JJ Ford, great job getting an upgrade before the Super Bowl. He's already playing up to a 99. We're going to go field general, get some a little bit more accurate in the mid to short range. And I mean, this guy has just been the face of this franchise. Also wears that C on his chest, obviously for the captain. And then Jahan Dotson probably going to need to play a much bigger role today because we don't have Curtis Samuel, which is very unfortunate. He is injured, so Jahan will probably be the wide receiver number two, if not wide receiver number three, uh, depending on George Williams might have that spot. But I will take all the last minute upgrades I can get. And I hope you guys are primed and ready for our first ever Super Bowl. Like I said, if you guys want me to keep this series going, I certainly can. If I don't hear anything from you, we will probably put a bow on this thing. So let's do it in style and bring home that Lombardi. Without further ado, let's get on down to the bowl in Mercedes-Benz Stadium and get ready for the game. And here come the Sentinels. We are the away team. Doesn't really matter, though. I mean, there's no real home field advantage in this one. And here come the villains, the bad guys, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. For all the cookies, for all the marbles, sorry, we're not going to be listening to Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis. I'm sure we've heard them enough over the past several years. Lamar getting his boys fired up, JJ getting his boys fired up, and we are going to get the ball to start. And I mean, I feel like even with the emergence of Dudley Saxton, superstar dev, of course, he had a big game in the NFC Conference Championship, but I just have a feeling that J.J. Ford is going to need to put the team on his back today, play great, and have one of those big, you know, 400-plus yard games with maybe three tutties or something like that. I mean, we're going to have to have everybody, right, step up and play great, but I think it all starts with J.J. Ford. And it is time, ladies and gents, going to start this thing out single back here with a Little play action rollout. Going to be looking for Terry. It's accurate as always from J.J. Ford. Thank God that we don't have Sam Howell or Joshua Dobbs playing in this game. If you guys remember, they had to step in and play some snaps earlier on in the season. And let's just say it was rough. So we got the general himself back in town. 
And we're going to actually go outside run to Dudley here, see if he can pick up uh, where he left off in the last game. We got some good blocks, and oh, he should have been tackled, but Dudley has that speed. Watch out. He's a superstar now. Ravens, he should have been tackled in the backfield for sure, but he was able to avoid the tackler and pick up a monster gain of 22. We'll stay single back here. So far, all three snaps out of the single back formation, and I think it's going to be Terry again. He may need to have a monster game as well. Of course, our Wide receiver number one in every sense of the word. Terry has had just such an electrifying season. Really, every every season of this franchise, but especially this previous this previous uh, season, he has just played so great. And we're going to go ahead and try the outside with Dudley again. Blocking is there. Got a nice lead block. And Dudley going to score the first points of the Super Bowl. Crown this man the superstar of the team now. One of them, at least. He's got that dev trait, and he don't know how to act. You can't tell this man nothing. You got to remember he has jukebox now and spin cycle, so I need to definitely be utilizing that. But, I mean, picture perfect drive. You cannot do it any better than that. And the Sentinels are going to strike first blood here in the Super Bowl. Now let's see what our defense has in store for Lamar Jackson and this high-powered Ravens offense. Lamar Jackson did... Am I reading that correctly? Does this man have zero inter... Wow. My man threw zero interceptions throughout the entire season. That is crazy. That's never been done before. I mean, unless you're like somebody who plays only a couple series. But I mean, that is just ridiculous. Zero picks? And we got to contend with that. There's a great catch by Mark Andrews getting stopped there by Cam Curl. And I just realized, seeing my defenders on the field... How about no dev upgrade for middle linebacker or uh, outside linebacker, Justin Hayward? That is rather criminal. I'm not even going to lie to you. Read option. We got to be aware of this, guys. We're playing Lamar Jackson here. We got to always be watching for the read option and the triple option because we know he can carve us up like a Thanksgiving turkey. We'll go press blitz, and I'm going to use her up on Quan Martin. Hopefully, I see Elijah Mitchell just blocking back there. It's going to be a handoff, actually. Juan Martin was there to get him and actually going to be stopped short of the line to gain, they say, third and inches. So this is a big one here. And got to definitely, I need a spy probably on the field. We're going to go 4-3 blitz, but I am going to definitely use her up on Tony Knight here and got to really make sure we watch Lamar Jackson, keep eyes on him at all times. Not going to matter because there's Jamin Davis. Lamar Jackson instantly tried to escape the pocket. And Jamin was right there to greet him for a nice uh, Vince Lombardi Super Bowl tackle. And just like that, we're going to actually get the ball back with a chance to go up two scores. And playing in the Super Bowl, playing a high-powered team like the Ravens, I am not taking my foot off the gas at all at any point in this game. We've been literally single back, I think, this entire game. But it's working. So, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, as they say. Jahan Dotson, we just talked about him pregame and how he was going to play such a much bigger role. But the absence of Curtis Samuel picked up a very nice gain. And we're already into Ravens territory. New nickname for Dudley. We're going to call him Superstar Sax. Ah, that's got a great ring to it. Superstar Sax going to get the ball looking for tackles. And I'm already seeing that superstar light up when I try my juke moves. Here on second and 10, of course, single back again. Why would it be anything different? We're getting sacked. Yep, Adafe Owe gets us. I saw the pressure. I knew there was no way to go. J.J. Ford is about as slow as molasses in January. So I just figured, hey, why do anything dumb? Why get a throw out of sack? Animation, interception. Let's go ahead and take the sack. Live to fight another down, hopefully. And here on third and 15, see if we can pick this up. See who wants to get open. It's George. It's George. 6'9", George, go. Does he have the speed? Does he have the speed? He doesn't. He's going to be chased down there at the very last second. But still, 43 yards on the reception. Marcus Williams going to get us. But we get this thing all the way down to the 11. I'll tell you what, man. There is just something special about this Sentinels team. I love them. And... Regardless of what happens, I'm going to miss playing with them. I really am. Is Dudley going to score again? He just got hammered there. Did pick up four, but he's at four rushes for 56 yards. And we are only in the first quarter. So hold on to your britches 
John Harbaugh and the Ravens. This one could be a tough day at the office for you. Let's go ahead and spell in our other running back, Dwight Jackson, and see if he can have the same sort of success that Dudley has. Needs a good block. He got it momentarily. Dwight's the power back. And he did not get the first down, but does get it all the way to the two. Third and one here, and I kind of want to... I'm going to audible this. Call me crazy. I feel confident about the inside zone with Jackson, and he got stonewalled, and there's a flag. Probably going to be holding. It is going to be holding, and we'll see if the Ravens accept it. If they do, they're going to give us another shot on third and 11, and they actually do. So we do have another chance to score here, which I'm actually kind of happy about. I mean, it was going to be a field goal anyways, so like you might as well give us one more chance, right? And we'll see if we can capitalize. Is it Georgia again? Boom! Just the pinpoint accuracy from J.J. Ford and George Williams stepping up huge with the absence of his brother, Curtis Samuel. And I mean, you can't thread the needle any better than that. You really can't. JJ put it exactly where it needed to be. And we are about to go up 14-0 in the biggest game of Coach Smalls' career. And so far, I am loving it. But yeah, I'm never counting out a team like this. I don't care if we're up 35 to nothing. We are going balls to the wall. We also got John Allen back as well. So we'll see if he's going to be a factor. Elijah Mitchell trying to escape the tackle of Justin Hayward. Tony Knight's there to get him. And now a big third and five for Baltimore. Dime, but I got QB contain. I can also see the routes as well. So I think we're going to have Trovon Wiley, our linebacker, kind of drop out here in coverage. Lamar scrambling. We know he can do that. But I don't think that was the right time to scramble at all. We had lots of DBs on the field. You know, somebody was going to hawk him down. And how about two, three and outs back to back for the Ravens and two scoring drives back-to-back -back for the Sentinels. It's a coach's dream. It's a coach's dream. You can't draw it up any better than that. And hopefully we can keep the good times rolling, score again. We still got a minute in the first quarter. First quarter domination by the Sentinels. 119 passing yards to 13 and 66 rushing yards to 12 and 14-0, of course, on the scoreboard in favor of the Sents. And, uh, you know, I know in Madden, Teams can seemingly flip a switch, especially when you got a team like this. But so far, you got to feel good about what the Sens are doing. I don't feel good about that run by Dwight Jackson, though. That's going to make it third in inches. Going to Dwight a lot in this half, I know. But I want to keep Dudley fresh. And Dwight, can he push the pile forward? They're going to say fourth in inches. Damian Lewis, our left guard, gets injured. So that's not good at all. And I mean, look, the, even the coach is saying go for it. Coach is saying go for it. I was probably going to go for it anyways. I was probably never going to uh, kick the field goal. Not from this range anyways. And I'm going to go run again. Hasn't really worked, you know, as of these last couple snaps. But hopefully Dwight, yeah, or that's Dudley now, I'm sorry. Superstar sacks, my apologies. Coming in, picking up the first down, doing Dudley sacks and things. Damian Lewis not going to come back. That sucks. It's going to bring in Braden Daniels. Let's go back to our single back formation here. I am going to put George Williams on a streak. And depending on what uh, the corner Marlon Humphreys does, this could be a quick step drop. I don't like it. And my other read is also gone too. Terry on the drag was my second read. If I had just a little more cojones, I might have tried to fire it to George Williams. But look, I mean, there's no sense in... You know, doing anything crazy. We got a 14-point cushion. We're now pretty much in field goal range. Nobody's covering Bart Burns, by the way. So Bart is probably going streaking. Yeah, I mean, that's that's easy. Child's play. There was nobody on him whatsoever. We're keeping this great drive moving. I think I've called more single back sets in this game than I may have all season. I'm going to put Terry on a curl and probably looking for my tight ends. Let's just give it to Logan Thomas who's actually going to pick up a first down, gain a 10, and that gets the ball down to the 12. Coach is saying HB stretch again out of single back, and I like it. i um, going to eh, – we're going to run away from the blockers, although I do kind of like the way we're set up there on the right side with our 13 personnel. 
but we'll still go outside anyways. And, oh, I need somebody to block Marcus Williams there. One block on Marcus Williams, and Dudley could have been home free, which he has already <laughs> in this game. But that's all right, though. Gain of three. I'm fine with it. You know, right now, just making sure we don't make a big mistake. And even if we have to kick a field goal here, then so be it. Come out single back here with a play action rollout and Logan Tom. Thomas, I think, is there. Look at the diving catch from our backup tight end. Everybody getting involved in this one. Go ahead and throw that ball to the crowd. He's playing the violin. He's basically saying it's over. The fat lady has sung. I'm not going to treat the game like that, but I honestly couldn't be happier. What do they say on the on the good old playground? 21-0 blowout? 21-0. And so far, the Ravens haven't really done anything. And we can see the routes, which I don't always like because I feel like I get tunnel vision on that player. I'm going to have Dante Fowler play the drag. It was a drag to Mark Andrews. And only Lamar Jackson's, not only his second completed pass, but only his second attempted pass. And we're well into the second quarter. So, uh, you know, not... Didn't think that that was going to be the case. And we're going to go ahead and press up again. It's an Elijah Mitchell run. That's a good one. Nice cutback. He stopped by Cam Curl. Jackson full uh, full house again. Got to make sure we use her up on Mark Andrews. He's looking kind of tired back there. Instead, it's just going to be Kevin Thompson. And he gets hurt for his efforts. But, I mean, the good thing for the Ravens, their running back room is deep. They got Elijah Mitchell, J.K. Dobbins, Devin Singletary. So I think they'll be just fine without Kevin. <laughs> Dial up a little bit of pressure here with Jamin. It's going to be, yep, got to watch that. RPO, Justin Hayward. Oh, we couldn't get to him. Jackson shrugging people off, making men miss. That's a great clutch carry. We're not going to see him fumble the ball too much, especially if he gets that good old Truz X Factor on, which he may have now. He does not. But still, it's not going to see him fumble too much. Let's go ahead and audible into zone. I feel more confident uh, zone on this one. Lamar's going to change the play. A little end around to Zay Flowers. That did not work well at all as what should be, in my opinion, a superstar dev player in Justin Hayward is able to make the stop. And maybe we can see our new X-Factor player, Emmanuel Forbes, get some picks. That would be lovely. But a big third and two. See what Jackson does. He's giving it to Mitchell. But our big run stuffer, Jonathan Allen, is back. And when he is back in the fray, good luck running the ball at him. And John Harbaugh is going to elect wisely, I would say, to go for the field goal and just put some points on the board. They've been staring at that goose egg all game long. They got Justin Tucker. He's automatic. And they finally get their first points with four minutes to go until halftime. And let's just see if we can keep pouring it on with the Sentinels offense. And look at superstar sacks, averaging 10.6 yards per carry. Yeah, I would say that that dev up is well-deserved. And I just can't keep talking about it, man. That's That's been one of the craziest development paths that I've, you know, seen a player do. And Madden, oh, we had a big hole there for a minute and just needed Ryan Sweet, our left guard, who shouldn't even be playing, but he is. Just needed him to hold a block. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. But that's been, yeah, one of the craziest development journeys that I've seen. I mean, to go from normal dev, basically just a... Uh, a throw-in player, if you will. He's actually out there spread wide, too. How about that? Um, We're going to get sacked, okay, by Justin Matabuike. That'll bring up a big third and 17. I mean, you guys see, the coach wants me to go gun verticals. I've already called this play twice, but it's a coach suggestion. It's a good play, and one of the few that I feel confident in running on third and long. Maybe Terry might be there. McLaurin hangs on. I mean, it's just weapons, weapons everywhere. Who do you stop if you're Baltimore? Do you clue in on Saxton? Do you clue in on George Williams? Do you clue in on Jahan Dotson? Do you clue in on Terry McLaurin? You always got to clue in on J.J. Ford. But everybody getting involved, and I love it. And Bart Burns gets injured. One thing I'll say about Bart, yes, he is X-Factor now. Great player. Love him. Big Bart Burns fan. He tends to get injured quite often. And Terry tends to get pressed quite often. And you already know where my mind's going. If I see that safety lurk up, it's going to be a shot to Terry, which the safety did. Oh, oh, Terry's so open. I don't know what the heck Rocky Asin did. 
It's almost like he left Terry for a moment. And Terry gets a huge conversion. And I mean, we just cannot be stopped right now. And yeah, what 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 did Rocky Sin do? Like he was pressing up Terry, of course. Terry beats him. I throw it. And then like, what's he doing? What are you doing, Rock? What'd you think Terry was gonna run a curl? I mean, he just got completely turned around and definitely paid the price for it. Two minutes to go here. Ravens get the ball after halftime. So right now, kind of want to think about killing this clock a little bit. We got heavy pressure. Dudley does catch it. And I mean, the jukes are just insane. It's a great pickup. Going to get the ball to the 16. And I'm in no rush to snap this ball. How about draw play to SS? I like that logic. Give me some good blockers. And oh, Dudley with the power. You don't often see him slipping tackles like that. He's got 73 yards and a touchdown. And J.J. Ford's balling out as well. So all the Sentinels came to play today. And the biggest stage so far of this franchise. And seriously, if you guys want me to continue this, this franchise until Madden 25 comes out or, you know, college football 25, not sure how much of that I'm going to play. But just let me know. Now, I'm not saying that I won't. Ah, oh, we're going to be sacked. Roquan Smith gets us and somebody else as well. Ravens pass rush has been here today, I will say. But it's all right. We're going to be able to take most of this clock down. Probably kick a field goal, which I'm okay with. But the Ravens are really not going to have any time to do anything at all. Gonna snap this ball here and just see who wants to get open. We'll just give it to George. I mean, I'm fine with that. Like I said, don't think the hard ball is even going to call a timeout. So we'll go ahead and call one here with about three seconds and hopefully go up 24 to three. Come on, Joey. Let's get it done. I believe in you. That one should be money right down the middle. And it is. So 24 to three, a dominating half of football from the Sentinels, to say the least, but still work to be done. We cannot rest on our laurels. I mean, we're just absolutely crushing it in terms of yardage. Ravens had that one good drive, really, that ended in three. And aside from that, it's been this man right here, Dudley Saxton. He is awesome. I'll tell you what, man. I'm going to miss Dudley. He may be the he may be the coach of whatever team I use for my franchise series in Madden 25. I think he earned that. And uh, I did go throw it deep to start, so I'm going to stick with that. And you know what? I went defend the short pass, but I feel like... No. Uh, no, we'll go... Yeah, defend the short pass. I mean, it worked, you know. I feel like Lamar and the Ravens are probably going to be having to play a little bit of hero ball and do some deep passes, but it worked. Show me that you can stop it or beat it, I should say, and maybe I'll adjust. But right now, just got to duplicate, carbon copy what we did in that first half. See what John Harbaugh said uh, in the locker room here in halftime. See if he said something that could get the boys fired up. We see the drag route again. Hayward playing it pretty good, but wide open there is Elijah Mitchell. Hayward comes back to make the play. And I can't believe that Jackson has only attempted five passes. and <laughs> We are in the third quarter. That is absolutely insane. Now, I'm not arguing with it. Not arguing with it at all. Got to watch this wheel route, too, for Mitchell. He's going to be coming out of the backfield. We'll see if Jackson goes to him. He does not. He instead goes to Derek Verdon, the fullback of all people. And we're there to stop him. Third and one coming up. I think Nickel Blitz is the call here. We're going to use her up on Jamin Davis. Of course, got to watch... Jackson, who's we cannot let him escape the pocket today. I love it. And Dante Fowler going to bring him down. He has, I think, one good run. And every other time he's tried to escape the pocket like that, we've just been there with suffocating defense. And that is, you know, in many ways, this Baltimore Ravens identity is Lamar Jackson. And what he's doing on the ground so far in this one, he ain't doing diddly. But I'll tell you who is doing diddly on the ground. Superstar freaking Saxton. Oh, God. Now this. Now we got Milo Eifler, my linebacker. Why? There's like one set where they have a defender come in. And he loses three yards. Like, that should have been Dudley Saxton. It was a draw play. It's that. It's right there. You, well, that's not the one. But you see there's no uh, player portrait there. And for whatever reason, whenever I call that, they they bring in a defender, and I don't like it. Second and 13 now. That does put us definitely behind the sticks. We'll go underneath to Jahan Dotson, who almost gets all of it back. Gets about 12.5 of it back. 
That's going to bring up third and inches, and I think we do trust Dudley. He's running great in this one. We're going to have him run behind uh, our fullback here, Michael Burton. Got to ID up the proper guy as the Mike. And all we got to do is pick, pick up inches, and Dudley not going to get it. Suffocating defense there by the Ravens. Uh, hats off to them. That was a very, very good play and Roquan Smith is able to get us and we have to pump the ball with Tressway for the first time today so if anything that's about the first thing I would say that went right for the Ravens but the question is can they capitalize and actually do something on offense I sure hope not Don't oh, it's a fumble look at that Will Devlin picks it up oh my god you can't make this stuff up that was Charleston Haywood Rookie corner out of UCLA. Fourth round pick from the Ravens. And who was there to make contact and jar that thing free? It was Young, but not Chase Young. He wasn't the one anyways. Okay, it was Milo Eifler. I, who the heck is 43 Young? I have no idea. Must be a practice squad guy. But it was Milo Eifler making up for that loss of three on his... Very strange carry that he shouldn't have had. Coming in and getting a forced fumble. Just when the Ravens had something going their way. We're there to disrupt it. I absolutely freaking love it. Come on, Ford. Throw it away. Oh, man. This Ravens uh, pass rush is pretty good. And somehow we were able to throw that ball away. I have no idea how. If we have to settle for the three, I am totally fine with that. Don't mind that at all. Obviously, would would like points. Yes. I would like Terry to get pressed too, but that's not happening. Maybe he puts a joiner, another practice squad guy that we rarely ever call. Um, we're going to go. Is that George? Oh, he was open for a split second. That was the first in, really inaccurate ball that we've seen JJ Ford throw. But that's all right because we have a chance to go up by 24 now, which again, I am totally cool with that. Got this game still definitely in our grasp. And now the Ravens, now the Ravens gonna get a chance to go on offense. Thought they were gonna go on offense last drive, but they fumbled it. And we'll see what they do. Good old Father That's Time starting, starting to rear his ugly head as there's, I mean, there's still a lot of it. Yes. Oh come on, give me some cookies, man. I saw the route and I was in perfect position with Cam Curl. I pressed triangle and for whatever reason, he didn't want to jump. Pressure time here. Five minutes to go until the fourth quarter. Can we hang on? So far, we've played, uh, you know, basically three quarters of great football. Diving catch there by Zay Jones. I will say Jackson is perfect, albeit uh, only eight for eight. But he is perfect. Yet to throw an incomplete pass. So I guess, you know, Ravens got that going for him in a way. And it's second and three. I need to see John Allen get back there, make a big game wrecking play. That would be awesome. Got to watch the rollout from Jackson. And that's OBJ making his first catch of the game. Jackson remains perfect, 9 for 9. Let's go ahead and guess pass here and shade inside. Chase Young going to be dropping back, playing a little bit of coverage here. Watching, of course, Mark Andrews. And that's a touchdown to Zay Flowers. Okay. The Ravens score their first touchdown of the game. And I will say they're going to go for two, obviously. Um, I will say that drive was a little scary for me because it was very easy. No adversity whatsoever. Come on, someone get to Jackson. Two-point conversion, though, is no good. Pass was caught, but it was out of bounds. And the game plan right now is simple, guys. It's the game plan that every coach draws up for every single game, and that is score. Score points, keep scoring points, and we win this game. Going to get a little aggressive here. Don't want to stay too conservative, so we're going to pass it here on... Opening play and wide open as Bart Burns there. That's a good one. JJ Ford, though, 16 for 19. So not perfect like Jackson, but he's definitely got the yards to back it up. He's definitely got the uh, attempts to back it up, you know. And I think we go back to Dudley on the outside. And on this play, I am going to run away from the blockers, which I usually do in these 13 personnel sets. Although I will say... Hasn't been working great as of late. And Dudley, he does got the steerable juke animations. He fumbled it. He coughed up the football. Oh, Dudley, man. Did you pack the Robitussin today, brother? Did you pack the Robitussin? 
that's one thing you got to watch, though, with those jukes. When you start doing too many jukes like that, bad things can tend to happen. That was Draymond Jones, the former Ohio State Buckeye. And look, guys, we don't need to be giving these Ravens any momentum here, okay? No momentum. I know we're still up big on the scoreboard, but I feel like they're starting to, you know, get, get a little bit of things working in their favor. There's Zay Jones, the recipient of that previous touchdown. Lamar Jackson's still perfect. We got to force some incompletions, guys. Probably a much bigger third down than some of you guys might realize. We got Jamin Davis playing spy. It's Andrews. He's going to get it, isn't he? He does. By a short and a curly. We were in bad position. I had to have my right linebacker come all the way over to that side of the field. I tried to, to use Justin Hayward, who was playing spy, to get over there, but yeah, it's just too much ground to make up, unfortunately. And definitely not what I wanted to see. Now, I will say that the clock is definitely starting to become a factor. Jackson going to scramble and actually get sacked by Chase Young. And we have completely erased that part of the playbook from the Ravens. And when you're playing the Ravens, that's like the number one thing you got to watch for. So I'm definitely pretty giddy about that, if I may say. And second and 12, Jackson coming out shotgun. I got to watch Mark Andrews, though. He's been... The big target for Jackson and also Zay Flowers, too. Emmanuel Forbes, the new X-Factor, gets him, but not before the first down was achieved. Not the best quarter of football from us. Uh, definitely not as good as the first two. That much is for sure. We only put up three, and we did allow the Ravens to score a touchdown. And we fumbled it. Actually, both teams fumbled it, oddly enough. Still definitely, you know, vastly outgaining them on the scoreboard, yes. But a score here... And I am right back into aggression mode. And, you know, definitely good. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. I'll probably try to kill the clock a little bit. Mitchell still can't get anything going. Only going to pick up one on the play. Come on, Sentinels. I need you to just make a big play here, please. They would probably go for it, I would imagine. I'm going to have Chase Young play a little bit of coverage. And that is just going to be out of the back of the end zone. For Lamar Jackson's first incompletion. Now, we'll see if they go for it. I'm sure. Well, no. They're not, actually. They're going to settle for a field goal. I guess that'll make it a two-possession game, assuming that the Ravens will be able to score and get a two-point conversion. So the logic is there. But uh, Ben, but don't break from our defense. Now we just got to wipe this time off of the clock. So it may be screens, you know, handoffs, but we got to pick up some first downs too. So may still need to be aggressive on this drive. Let's start with something semi-safe here. Back to our good old single back and hopefully we can hit a dragging McLaurin which we do can Terry shake somebody he won't but I am totally fine with that because we now got a lot of breathing room here getting very close to field goal range and we can hopefully start to think about taking some of this clock off here go ahead and bring in Dwight Jackson who got a handful of carries in the first half and not too many if any, really, in the second half. Let's send over Bart Burns here. Let's get a little bit of extra support on that left side. And Dwight, I mean, a gain of three, not the worst thing in the world. But definitely would have liked to see more. Got to get some good yards here. We're going to have our guard pulling again. Dudley going to follow him. And... and please don't. Dudley fumbled it again. No. Superstar sacks. You're selling in this game, brother. What are you doing? It must be those jukes that I'm trying to put on there, man. And Marlon Humphrey was there. I think he was the one that punched it out, actually. And we can't be doing that, man. Why are we leaving the door cracked open for these Ravens? Jackson getting the first down. And it's only a two-score game, by the way. It's only a two-score game. And I don't know what happened. We're just, we're not collapsing in the second half, but we kind of are. In a way, we'll see if Jackson uh, runs it again here. He is. Come on, guys. Do not let this man get started. Are you kidding me? Okay. I got you. Going to have to go conservative for sure on the option defense. I'm not feeling great about it. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not feeling great about it. Need a sack or two? That would be wonderful. Let's actually cancel the blitz with Jamin Davis. Oh, my God. It's Rashad Bateman. Okay. So this game is now very exciting. Uh, wasn't too exciting. It was, it was very exciting in the first half for me. Not if you like uh, good, you know, close shootout games. 
but it is basically sweaty palms time now. Justin Hayward, can you maybe get back there? Come on, get to Jackson. Almost got him. Jamin Davis there to tackle Elijah Mitchell. And that's going to bring up second and goal from the seven. I mean, do we sell out to stop the run? I don't think we do. Because yeah. I could see it being a pass. Uh, it's going to be a run for sure. It's definitely going to be a run. Right. I should have. No, it's not. See, look. It was a pass. And that's a... Zay Jones' second touchdown. Wow. So we got ourselves a ball game here, guys. It's back to an eight-point game. And if we don't score, which we haven't been able to, like, in quite some time, if we don't score, the Ravens, now they would only be able to tie it. They would need a touchdown and a two-point conversion, so there's still that. I'm not going to return it. I've seen too many fumbles. But now it's like, do you trust Dudley? Do you go strictly pass? I don't know. Those are big question marks. I mean, we've we've trusted Dudley all season. He's put the ball on the ground twice in this one. I mean, you can't do that. So let's bring in uh, Dwight Jackson here, see if he can do anything different. And got to also watch uh, Matt Abuike over there. He could be a game wrecker. Could not cut back in time. I'll make a second and 11. All right, I have not called it yet. I've been making it a point not to call it, but I am using my single back X bunch nasty. It is time. And we got to have some protection. This The blocks have got to hold. And we got to complete this pass. And I think... Oh, can I get some PI? It's an early breakup. Oh, my God, dude. What is going on with life right now? I don't know. I mean, look. We got ourselves a ball game now. Can Terry... George Williams, we've hit him a couple times. See who gets open. I think it's George again. Thank you, George. It's our third time hitting him on that route. I normally look for Terry on that play, but George Williams coming up clutch, four for 88 so far, and quite possibly the biggest pass completion of the entire game. Here you go, Dudley. Ball carrier conservative, all right? I need you to hold on to that pigskin. Can you do that for me? Now, I'm not going to be trying to do any fancy jukes or anything like that. Right now, all we care about is just taking this clock out and getting out of here with the victory. And even that animation, I'm not going to lie, my heart kind of skipped a beat a little bit. And on third and inches with a running back who's been fumbling the ball, the other running back not really getting it going too much. Maybe we go RPO and maybe I hit George Williams. That's... That's a distinct possibility. That may even be my first read. Yep, it is. Thank you, George. George Williams quietly. I thought Dudley was going to be our MVP. He kind of took that away. George Williams may be our MVP in this one. Going to give it to Dudley again. Uh, always a little scary. And there we go. There's Saxton. Please don't fumble it. That one should pretty much ice this thing. That may have gotten Dudley over 100 yards, too, if not very close. And that was a great run from Saxon. Look, I know I hated on him a little bit in this game, but, I mean, come on. You know, he, he single-handedly really shifted the tide in favor of the Ravens. But at the end of the day, he's still our guy. We know that to be true. They may be trying to let me score here, too. I don't know. I mean, that that would probably, uh, probably be the move if it was me. Because, I mean, if you call your timeouts, all we're going to do is run the clock down, kick a field goal probably, and get out of here. But if they want to let me score, I'm definitely going to score. Because then it would surely be out of reach. Dudley, we're going to go outside here, see if we can get some blocks to seal on the edge, which we do. Dudley going to trot into the end zone. That should pretty much do it. Game not technically over yet. Uh, you know, pigs could fly, I guess. Some people claim they've seen that. I never have. But if we do go on to win this one, it was <laughs> it was not pretty in that second half, I will say that. But it was a hard-fought game. We did just enough to hang on. And then Dudley put the icing on the cake there at the end. Baltimore trying to put some points on the board here, but 40 seconds, I mean, what can you really do? There's not a whole lot you can do. I mean, that's <laughs> that's a start. That's a start, but just, I mean, too much of a hill to climb. We did just enough there at the end, both defensively and offensively, I would say, to uh, seal this one, sign, seal, deliver, gift wrapped. Ravens are going to call a timeout, but I, 
Doesn't matter at this point. Final play of the game here. Will Jackson and the boys score. How about just a pick from Kendall Fuller to really put the icing on this cake here. He's trying to score. Look at Kendall. And how about the St. Louis Sentinels going to be hoisting that Lombardi trophy. Took us three hard fought seasons to get here. A lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of changes, a lot of Big name players, Sam Howell getting hyped. Settle down there, buddy. You didn't do too much. But I sure do appreciate anybody who's still watching at this point. Comment down below what your favorite St. Louis Sentinels moment was. Your favorite St. Louis Sentinels player. What you love about this series. I truly, truly appreciate uh, those of you who watch this series and love it. And comment and support me. You know, I'm just going to be honest with you. I have a full-time job that I work two kids i'm trying my best to make youtube a second job a side job or maybe someday even a full-time job and i do believe i can get there but it will not be it'll be because of you guys if that happens and i just want to always put out great quality content that you guys enjoy and if you want me to keep sentinels franchise going let me know i might but if not we got the sfl series going on maybe i can do some rebuilds or something like that if you guys want me to and then, of course, when Madden 25 comes out, we're going balls to the wall with that. And might even do something in college football 25. I don't know. Still undecided on that, but let's go ahead and recap the game. J.J. Ford, 336 yards, 83% completion, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. Jackson tried to hang in there. I mean, he, you know, good completion, 79, two touchdowns. That last interception had no bearing on the stats. That doesn't really matter. And Dudley Saxton, 114 yards, two touchdowns. But those two fumbles, man. Dudley, you almost got put in the doghouse, brother. I'm not going to lie to you. Lamar Jackson kind of got it going there at the end. Gary Terry was our number one receiver, as he usually is, with a buck 09. But George Williams, bigger impact in this game for sure. He was our MVP, at least on the receiving side. Zay Flowers played good. Mark Andrews, Rashad Bateman. John Dotson had a pretty good game as well. And then defensively, we had a lot of tackles for a loss. I am impressed with our defensive line. We really never let Lamar Jackson get going. I know he had 43 yards, but there was times where we were pretty much just making him one-dimensional. Chase Young had a sack as well. So did uh, Jamin Davis. And then, of course, that big, big pick from Kendall Fuller to really put the nail in the coffin and seal this one out. So how about that? I am excited. We finally win a Super Bowl. I never won one in my first series, Madden 23, Cupcake Relocation Franchise. And this was perfect timing because the new Maddens are about to come out. And we've, we we win a Super Bowl. The goal is accomplished. Our players get upgrades. And uh, yeah, I am just speechless. 34-19 is going to be the final score, and yay, CJ Smalls got his contract extended. Of course, coach of the year and a Lombardi in his pocket. Come on now, it's Lock City. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. But as always, I will catch you on the next one, whatever that one may be. I hope you guys are here with me. Until then, peace.